Hi guys. Mate, what are you doing? I do, I do the intro. How do you, I was just about to do a uh, a Shrek accent because we got asked to do a Shrek, but you've ruined it. Oh, I wasn't. I wasn't really. Um, hi guys, welcome back to the Once You're In, You're In podcast. I believe this is episode number fifty-five, and I apologise to people who have asked me to do an accent. I got asked to do an African accent, then I thought. I'm just going to come across as racist if I do an African accent. Like, I, just, I, I don't know how would I do an African accent. It's the same as if you do an Indian accent. Would I be classed as being racist if someone's asked me to do that? So I'm not going to do that because I don't want to upset people. Um, and I don't want to be ogreist. I got asked to do Shrek. I don't want to be ogreist. <laughs> so I can't do Shrek. Can't do donkey, donkeyist. Um, but no, in all seriousness, like I'm, I'm probably going to stop with the silly voices. And if I do a silly voice, it's going to be off my own accord. So uh, apologies, guys. And if that makes you want to switch off and not listen to the podcast, then fair play. So you've said, give give us suggestions. Give us suggestions. You get suggestions and you literally bottle it within one week and you go. Yeah, but mate, the suggestions that they were. If I got Australian, I'd do that. African. What do you you do African then? No, no, no. I don't want to be. I I wouldn't even be able to do an African. African accent. My, I'm awful. Well, so there you go. So what, it's my fault. Am I supposed to be able to do them all? You're the intro man. I'm not. Obviously today you ruined it. Yeah, I'm so the outro. Quit man. this and start it again. Yeah, let's restart. <laughs> restart, bro. Let's restart. That, like we didn't say anything. Right. Well, take episode two, take... fifty-five. Yeah. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about FPL because we've got a decent amount of people in the league. Um, I'm going to quickly talk about the Spotify ratings because we're on 144. So if you've not rated us, please do. I want to get us up to, to 150. Um, <laughs> and also, shout out to CMP. I'm going to start using this cup while we do the podcast as a, as a sponsor. And you can get CMP on CSN. If anybody wants to use Reese's code for CSN, you can get CMP products. Uh, and they're bringing out a new way, uh, Rainbow Cookie. By the time this is out, have, that'll be out. So get yourself some rainbow cookie. Confused? You haven't you haven't run this by me. Where's the cosign, mate? This is my podcast. Who's whose YouTube nah, channel? Is it really, nah, mate. I'm way more popular than you though. We've we've come to this kind of we've come to are, understanding. Mate. People tune I in. I made you. No one, you know that. No I one made tunes you. in to to hear Finn Kelly coach. You know. They it, tune in. They tune in to to hear me, and and only me. You're just in the background. Mm, right. Fair enough, mate. Fair enough. I'm gonna, I've told you, Mac is going to take your place if you're not careful. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it makes sense, mate. It makes sense. But anyway, in all seriousness, how's life, Finn? How's, how's the diet going? You, you sub 220 for the first time in what? Six months? Seven months? Surely. Yeah, since the start of the year, you were around that, weren't you? Should I have a look? Yeah. And also, mate, what's your beverage? What is the beverage in the, C- the CMP? Guess. Mm, it was like... it. It was like purple, so you, I don't really like it. You do know, mate. You love it. I love it. Vinto. Yeah. <laughs> sugar-free Vinto. Mate, sugar-free Vinto in this one, and then a white monster in this one. Oh, have you got Vinto as well? Yeah, sugar-free. We've got the same drink, mate. Uh, yeah, I'm not having white monster, because last week my heart was like going mental after I had that white monster. Don't know why. You like had an, You had an anxiety attack from the podcast. Yeah. No, I think it's no, because... It wouldn't have to so much out. It's because I... Um, Obviously, I'm having coffee in the morning now when I do cardio. And like I've gone from having no caffeine for ages to then having coffee in the morning and then a monster when I'm not moving all day until I do my yeah. steps. So it was like I could just tell I fell off. Um, but yeah, the last time I was sub-220 was January. Yeah, I got it right. I said to a client you today, You said last year. No, no, I said start of the year. I said, I said start of the year. It's mental. I said to a client today in their check-in, he, Adam, he was under 80 kilos. And I said, I'm going to guess the last time you were under 80 kilos was the first week of August. And it was the second week of August last year. And I was like, that's weird. That's mental like, when you had it? all this data in front of you. Mental, mental, mental such a great guess. No, I, 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 I've done it a few times. I've got weird recollection. Where I don't actually have any idea, but I can just predict. And I, was, I remember like I was, you were heavier than me at the back end of prep. And then I was, I was, and then I was thinking, right, well, if that was the case, I was 210 ish. I'm like, you were gaining relatively slow, a few more months. Hey, like, you're going to have to become a psychic. Honestly, mate, I know, I know exactly. Mystic Meg. Yeah. Like crystal so, yeah, ball. Sub 220. Feel good? Yeah, I feel sound. Um, I'm in that point where I, I'm, I'm. You're a classic BB? Yeah, I've turned into a classic BB now. I'm smaller. Uh, no, like, I'm at that point where, like, I'm. 
I'm wanting to see. Like when I first started, I wasn't like chasing the scale weight or I wasn't worrying. And like obviously I'm not like overly focused on it, but like each morning now, and I can tell like the nights before, I'm like, oh, like I'm, I do feel a little bit like lighter. I can tell like I'm, I'm probably going to weigh in a bit lighter, like little things like that, but I'm still a fat mess. Um, but I won't be in probably another month. Yeah. At the rate I'm going, I'm losing like, I'm, so I'm 15 pounds down in three weeks. So like that, that would, you would, you would assume that I'm five pounds down a week, but realistically it was like a big drop in the first day. And then I'm like three pounds down per week on average. Um, so if I keep that going three pounds down on average over the next like four weeks, I'll be down to like low two hundreds. Is that right? Yeah. To, uh, mid two hundreds. Yeah. Yeah. Like let's have it like 208, two Oh eight. Like but the thing yeah. is, it's never, it is never linear. Like you might have a week where you drop a pound and the following week you might drop five and it's the same. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. that's what I mean. On average, like, I'm not looking at week. I, I don't really look at weekly averages as much as I have them on my sheets. Like I look back, I look from a, a wider sort of aspect. Like I look at, right. Okay. This week you gained a pound or I gained a pound or whatever it may be. But the last two weeks you were half pound down. So the past three weeks you're basically holding like, so I never look at it like week to week exactly. But yeah, like I'm happy with where I'm at. Um, I just, I'm not, fair, I'm not even like overly focused on it or thinking about it. Like it is what it is. I'm just cracking on. Like, I'm not going to change anything. Basically what I'll do is if I stay the same weight for three days in a row, I'll make a change. And yeah. Something minor, like pull away 25 carb or just add a little bit of expenditure. But at the minute, I've still got plenty of room with food. Like, my food's not crazy high anymore, but I've still got loads of room. Like, I'm not hungry at all. Um, my food is currently 250 protein on a training day, 320 carb, 40 fat. Rest day, 220 protein, 130 carb, 50 fat. Sound? That's all good. That's all good. I'm a little bit. Ex- I'm a little bit further along the, uh, the the diet, and then also our goals are a bit different. I don't know, mate. I'm fucking peeled now. A few weeks out. A few Look days. Like I'm, actually, I'm actually two days out. Um, but no, I'm. Uh, I'm. Uh, I was 107 kilos on the dot again this morning. So that's two days of holding, which is quite normal, if I'm honest. I usually will have, have a slight drop after legs. Nothing too much. Usually, it's the le- the least drop after a training day. And then yesterday's session never that demanding. So I always almost like maintain. And then tomorrow I usually drop. And then I might potentially put two high days in just to see and assess and have some data from some high days because I don't really need to be lean in the round now in all seriousness. Like I'm not peeled, I'm not shredded, but for me not to be stepping on stage, I am a little bit too lean. If I wasn't going on holiday, I would have stopped the diet probably 10 to 14 days ago. Cause I reckon I'm probably only men's physique condition, probably like 10, 10 to 12, 10 to 14 pounds off from what I probably need to be, which would be accurate with what I'd guess my stage weight would be compared to last year, which would put me a good, like, that's 15 pounds up ish from last year which is all right in a short amount of time which is so that's that's not too bad so i'll definitely take that um but yeah just in a good spot feel relatively okay sleep quality i said to you like my, i can tell i'm leaner because my sleep quality and my sleep times definitely took a bit of a hit recently in the last like week or so uh, i can just tell i've got a few more kind of stages of oh i'm actually not fat i'm actually pretty lean now but it is what it is. It, like training's been absolutely sound. If it was where training was dropping off, I'd be like, right, cool, make a change, make a, a swap because you don't need to be doing this. But holiday literally on Monday, um, everything's in a good position. Food is pretty low. It's the lowest it's been, bar literally, I think two weeks of prep last year. And I, I feel like it's quite cool. But I've said to you on the other day, I don't feel at all hungry because I think when you've been in a prep, you push your boundaries a lot more so you actually realize that there's more you can do so right now like when i dieted before in previous years i was always like well at this point i'm leaner than probably what i've been the vast majority of times so i dieted i would probably look at it and i'd be like oh, I, i'd love a bagel i'd love an extra crumpet i'd love this in reality my appetite is not bad i could eat but i have absolutely no food signaling for anything at all which is a bit bizarre because i'm always switched off from food when food's high quite normal even when food's normal i'm relatively switched off but i've got absolutely zero cravings or, or wants or desires so yeah it's a bit strange because i thought at this point i'd be like oh, i can't wait to get my food higher when in reality i'm like i feel fine i feel somewhat dieted i can definitely tell i'm probably more fatigued than i actually realize i am but because i was in a prep last year it's like like i said it widens your horizon about actually the situation you're in so it's like 
even if I'm 70% right now, well, fuck, at least I'm not 30% or 20% like I was last year. So yeah, part of it, train is good, feel good, look pretty decent. Like I'm, I'm, I'm looking at myself and like, for the first time properly, like I'll always be, I think I would say to Finn, like I'm always relatively confident in how I look and, and how I train and stuff like that. But I'm actually looking at myself for the first time and I'm like, okay, cool. This is where I need to be. And this is the level of like size that I need to have. And another push. I'm like, yeah, cool. I'm confident next year will be a good one. So yeah, all is good. All is good. Right. Quickly about FPL. the FPL. FPL. Reese hasn't even joined it yet. No. So we've got 30 people in there already. Let's try and get that up to 50 before it starts. That'd be mint, 50 people. Mate, 50 people? I didn't think we'd have 50, if I'm honest. Well, we haven't. We've got 30. Yeah, but we'll get, <laughs> I mean, have you put it in your... I don't know, have you sent it to clients or have you just mentioned it on the podcast? No, I, just, I put it on my story and I've mentioned it on the podcast. Okay. Um, should we go through some names? We do, should we do the first five people's names? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Okay, so we've got me. We won't include me. My team name's FK United. Really creative. We've got Andy Bewley, another another creative one. Bewley FC. We've got Ryan Jackson, Jackson, another creative one. Jackson XI Eleven. Yeah. Uh, we've got a good one here. This is from Harry Putley. Do you know a Harry Putley, mate? I recognise his name. I think I don't know. I'm not sure. Though. His name's Saka Potatoes. Fantastic. Uh, yeah. Then we've got Will Bertolini. We all know Bertolini. <laughs> Will Bertolini's team name is just FC. <laughs> That's it. It's football club. Surprising to call himself like Big Bertolini's boys or something. Yeah, like that. that'd have be been good. Bertolini. This one's good. This will be the last one. Zach Feve or Zach Feve. Yeah. yeah one of your clients. Yeah. yeah. His, his name's Haven't Jot a Clue. Ah, I've got that. Good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Right, we'll leave it at that for people that don't like football. Um, but we will be going, we'll, we'll chat about FPL a little bit each week. Like, Would you be able to send me the link after this, mate? Because I'll put it in the group chat of my clients. Because right, I'm on I, the already, I sent you it the other day, just scroll back in your chat. Oh, okay, sound. I was on the YouTube video, but I can't, you can't copy a link for some reason off YouTube. So, yeah, that's all good. That's all good. We, we'll do an award. No, no actual prize, but an award oh, to the best, best name. Best name, obviously the winner. Uh, we'll, we'll get something sorted for that. I have but to we'll get, get some trophies made. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I have to, yeah. I'll, uh, I'll sell my Carabao Cup from last year. That'll be the winner. Just win yeah. a, like, just a shit PCA trophy. Like, oh, yeah, sound. You can have that. Right. Should we get into some questions? I think we've still got some from last week. Yeah, I do believe so. I do believe so. What time do you have till, mate, if you've got your hair cut at three? Just before three. Sound. That's cool. All is good. Right, sound. I don't know if we had any from last week. I'll get I, through. I did. We had two. I'm sure we had two each. We did have two each. Okay, yeah, I'll get them up from last week then. That's fair enough. On other news, mate, you know the, the TikTok video uh, uh, that I've made? Guess how many views it's got now? Ridiculous. Three yeah, million. So many comments. Like two, I think almost three million views, which is mad. Like three right. million people have seen my nose explode. 3.1 million. Christ. Do you know... Who was it? Tatenda. Um, did you see Tatenda's story about it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. thought it was funny. That made me uh, remind me of who was it? Like the what team was it? it? Was a player that put like a blood capsule in his mouth so that he could mm. get subbed off, or they, they weren't allowed another sub, so the game had to be postponed, or something like that happened. Yeah, that's basically what you did. You put yeah. fake blood up your nose, so you could get a viral TikTok video because that's how sad you are now. Yeah, exactly. All I think about is the clout. You were buzzing when it happened, though. I could tell straight away you were like, oh, I'm in, I'm going to have a video. No, I didn't. 100%. Mate, you didn't say that. I didn't say that. I was laughing. You didn't say that, but you were loving it. <laughs> no, I laughed. Mate, I, was, I wasn't thinking, oh, yeah, get a fucking viral video. I laughed and was like, oh, I did fucking... 100%. I said mate, you posted it, like, as soon as the session finished. Mate, you would do the exact same. It's funny. Like, I find stuff like that quite funny. It's amusing. It's not like your standard, oh, mate, I've just done a top set of a leg press. It's quite funny. And it was quite bad like <laughs> it wasn't just like a normal it was, yeah. bad. It, was yeah, bad. it wasn't no, it wasn't just like oh like a little bit of blood my nose like it was like a tap it was, you know from just a it set. wasn't it was weird it just came out and then it stopped yeah i know it was weird yeah and then like i had one yesterday from the same nostril so clearly i fucked something up hey, honestly, it was like you need to look minutes. after yourself taking all those steroids it's not good for you 
Yeah. Mate, I'm, I'm natty. What the fuck are you on about? Come on. All right. Are you ready? Uh, yeah. My stories aren't loading from last week. So, so. this is from Max Fowler Fitness. And Max he's asked Fowler. he's asked it again this week, right? And so he put, how to reduce pissing, drinking five litres and piss every 20 minutes. He asked it again this week. And he says he, he drinks six litres plus. So... Mm. You know, you're, water. you're lying to us, Max, because up in your water, you're probably going to piss more. Um, so I don't know. I'm going to go on to your page, Max, um, because I, I want to see your current level of composition. Because generally, the leaner that you are, the more times you're going to go to the toilet, at least for, <laughs> for a urination, because you're going to have less body fat, less extracellular space to hold fluid and also if you've got more muscle you're generally going to be able to hold fluid a little bit easier um if you're drinking let's say six liters and you weigh 60 kilos like you're probably going to be going for a week quite a lot if you weigh 120 kilos six liters probably won't feel like a lot um so yeah generally it's going to depend on composition it's going to depend on total muscle mass and total size of an individual um it's going to like say relate on um, the, the amount of body fat that you have those kind of things but then also like Outside of all that, you could potentially have an issue. Like you could have a weak bladder. Like I remember when I had sciatica, I've told this loads of times. When I had sciatica, I just used to piss myself all the time. Like not completely where I just let out an entire wee, but like I couldn't hold it in. If I needed a wee, I needed a wee and I had to go straight away. Like if I was in a car and I was like going on a drive any longer than half an hour, like I would pretty much every time wee a little bit. I just I couldn't hold it in because I had like no control over it because of my sciatica. It was weird. As now I'm fine, um, but like it could be something like that as well potentially. But it it wasn't like with that for me anyway. In my experience, it wasn't that I needed to go more. It was just that when I did need a wee, it was like shit. I need to go straight away. Um, but yeah, mainly like I say, mate. You know, body weight, body composition total size of the individual um they're the most sort of common reasons as to why you're probably going more often than not and then if it's something else like it could just be something that we're not going to be experts in like a urinary tract issue that you'd be better off seeing your gp yeah, yeah. good answer mate good answer that's that um finn who do you ask when who do you ask for advice that doesn't really make sense who do you ask for advice when you have to make a difficult decision? Who's asked this? Aisha. And she's asking me? No, she's not. So I'm just asking you because she asked us. <laughs> therefore, I'm asking you because that's how the questions were. Okay, what, she, okay. What, what, what was it? I was confused. Who do, who do you ask? And you, got, you need some, you need, you're making a difficult decision. You don't know whether to put Harland or Salah in your FPL. Who do uh, I ask? Also, yeah, who do you ask for? Do you go, do you go to your mum? Do you go to Shannon? Do you go to me? I'll be like, this is just me. And I don't think this is a good trait of mine, to be honest. But I just like, I literally come to decisions on my own. Yeah. Like as much, I have a, like, I'm very close with my mum, but I wouldn't feel like I need to ask her for like a big decision or for her opinion or something like that. Um, I'd speak to Shannon about it, but even so, like I still make my own mind up. I think that's just how I've always been. Like I've never felt, oh, I need to ask them before I do something, or I need to ask for someone's advice in case I'm, you know, not gonna, I'm not thinking straight. Like if I want to do something, I'll do it, and I'm confident in my own sort of decision to to do it. Yeah, yeah I'd say I'm the same. Like I'll run an idea off somebody, but I've already, in a sense, made like I like to have a think, make my own decision run it off somebody and say, this is what I'm doing. And like, not even if they say, yeah or no, I'll be like, okay, cool. That's fine. Like, thanks for your input. But I'm doing it or I'm not. <laughs> but, even everybody told you, don't take steroids. You're going to hurt yourself. And your mum wasn't happy. You know, then you just thought, oh, if I won't tell her, I'll do it anyway. Yeah, exactly. You know, just, <laughs> still don't know. It. Still don't know to this day. Yeah. I intentionally just hide everything. But yeah, she asked last year, Reese, can I ask honestly? And I just knew instantly. I was like, oh, fuck. Yeah, like, do you take steroids? And I was like, eh, it depends what you got. Yeah, you know, you know, maybe. Yeah, kind of like, yeah. It's like when we, I don't know if I said this on the podcast. We were at the Arnold's and there was uh, <laughs> the juniors had already been on. And obviously there was Reese and Jack. Um, and the, the, I don't know the other guy's name, but he obviously wasn't quite as good as you guys. Yeah. Um, but then there was, uh, I think it was like men's class C or whatever. Like, I don't know exactly who was on. It was still men's physique. And obviously they're all huge. Like, and she was like, 
are these, are these natural then fit? And I was sat next to Reese's mum. She's like, are these, are these natural? And I was like, uh, no. I was like, they won't be. I was like, they may, you never know. I was like, there might be a genetic freak up there. I was like, but it's very unlikely. And basically, Reese was the same size as all of them. <laughs> and I just, I think maybe at that point, she kind of knew. Yeah, she probably just thought, oh. I felt yeah. like say I think I said like oh like there won't really be anyone on here that's <laughs> that yeah, there won't be, won't be any, anybody any single person in that stage are not they're not natural none of them none of them yeah right fun. cool uh, this is Joey B underscore lifts um he's coached by Lewis, Lewis yeah. yeah he's currently close is he like sub six weeks out no, well, he said last week he was four weeks out, so I'm assuming oh. this week he's three weeks out, or maybe he's three and a half weeks out. He might be yeah, doing the same show. He'll be doing the yeah, Manchester yeah. show. He looks really good. Yeah, he looks. He solid. does look good. Yeah. So four weeks out from show day, your best tips to survive the final push. And when I saw this last week, this is my answer, and I'm literally going to leave it at this. Just listen to Lewis. That's a really good reply. I know. Because you shouldn't yeah. be listening to us when he's your coach. And I don't even mean that in like a, I'm not being rude or in any way. Like it won't help if we tell you, oh, try this, try this, do that, do that. Just listen to what yeah. Lewis says. No, mate, honestly, I'm actually impressed with that answer. Like that's a good reply. I think, yeah, that and literally chill out. Don't, don't think too much. Listen to Lewis. Don't, don't worry. Just take each day as it comes. So crack on. Yeah. Unfortunately, you'll have like, not to him, but people talk and you'll have input. And just judging off how people are, like we've always said, the lesser input, usually the better in circumstances. Mate, like 100%. Yeah. You don't need that seen many it, input. Seen it at first hand. Both of us have seen it at first hand this year. Yeah. Like, and not just with one person, like with multiple different people, either that we coach or not. Like, if you have too many people, it's the same with the saying, like, too many chefs spoil the broth, whatever it's called. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> no, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. too, many, too many cooks, that, in, in, that, that kind of thing. And it's yeah. true. Like, when I was prepping, I literally had AJ. Like, that was it. I didn't run anything by anyone else. I didn't need to. Like, obviously, I had you. I had Shannon. I had my family still. But at the end of the day, like, I'm not going to be like, oh, Reese, what do you think about this? Like, I, I don't think we ever spoke about anything like that. No. Like, we just, I was just like, all right, this is what I'm told to do. Do it. That was, yeah. that was the only thing that I focused on. Like, and at the end of the day, like, that's how it needs to be. Because you'll, you'll, you'll get better results like that because you won't be stressed. Because you'll just be like, right, my trusted in this guy, and that's it. And and you'll generally be like, okay, cool, that's fine. Like, I don't need to really worry because I'm just sort of putting the the trust in that one individual. Um, but yeah, like, 100, percent just relax and just literally listen to Lewis. That's not going to make your life any easier. Like, you know, you put there how to say how best to say your best tips to survive the final push. Like, it's still going to be hard. Listening to Lewis isn't going to make it amazingly easy, but like. It's not going to help if we tell you to do this or do that. Yeah. Binge watch once you're in, you're in while doing your steps. Yeah. That'll and sort you out. Yeah. To be fair, even like, even if we were to give you like, this is what you should be doing. This should be the plan of action. What can you actually do? And what could we say that it's going to be a grind? You're going to, you're going to feel pretty mad. Like you're not going to be, you're not going to be feeling amazing, but that's part of it. And you almost just have to take it day by day. So there's nothing we really could say. We say, do this, do this, just chill out, take each other as it comes appreciate when it's hard and think cool this is part of the game let's crack on and let's uh, let's get to show day and bring a good package which i know he will do if he listens to lois so yeah best of luck joey hopefully uh if i didn't talk to you before mate hopefully uh prep is swimmingly for the next three and a bit weeks i'm guessing so yeah all good um woody has asked big wood sign back up he, he's, he's starting I, I might get his intro video over to him today or tomorrow uh, i've got to get him set up before i go on holiday which will be uh, exciting um so he's asked best natural feds to compete finn Best natural feds. What are you thinking? Um, two bros, obviously, with the at the Arnold's. That's what you're looking for. Every, yeah. Everyone's natural. Though. Everyone's natural. Um, I got so, into, my mum goes, Reese. Is everyone? Na- is this a natural show? Like, yeah, hundred percent. I've just came back from a drug test. <laughs> um, so in the UK, you've generally got like the three main ones. Obviously, before it was the two main ones. It was just the BMBF and the UK DFBA. You've got other smaller federations like the NPA, for example, Natural Physique Association, which is a decent show. Um, but I would generally say, like, obviously now that WMBF mm-hmm. have got WMBF UK, they're your main three. WMBF UK, BMBF, WMBF. Choose whichever you want to do. Or choose, like, if you can afford to, do them all. Like, 100% do them all. Um, 
once you're already in in show condition, once you're in, you're in. Um, then do, just do multiple shows. Just enjoy it. Like, there's not. Again, it would be my opinion if I was. It'd be very biased of me to go. This one's the best one. This one's the second best. This is the third. Like, I don't really have any specific um, like favorite to be honest. Like, I. Hmm. I, I will do them all when it comes to it next year. Like, I'm not specifically like with one federation. I think a lot of people who comment on it are like with one. It's like CMP are the main sponsors of WMBF, so I could be very much like, oh, WMBF, WMBF's the best. Like, WMBF was good. Like, it was their first year last year. It was really, really good. Yeah, and I definitely want to do it. And that's sort of one of my main focuses, to be honest, is on that. But I'm not going to yeah. say that that's the best one or that you should just do that one. Like, they're all good. Experience it for yourself and see which one you prefer. And also, it doesn't matter. You could always do all of them. Like, it's not as if, like, you have to be aligned with just one federation and favorite just one federation. I think, especially before when it was just the BMBF and the uh, UK FBA, it was always, like, just, like yeah, rivalry. Yeah, you have to pick one. It's like, why do you have to pick one? Just do both if you want to do both. Like, you don't have to be uh, sort of specifically with one. Just do both see what you prefer and ultimately the, you'll probably be like them both and you can still do them both. Yeah. And you'll rarely ever hear, like I've never really heard anything that bad. Like oh, I did a BMBF show and it was awful. It was so badly ruined. Nah, Cause they're, they're good federations. Like, yeah, exactly. like it's, it's a case. There's not really a federation. The probably the worst federation you hear stories about is the top one in, in the UK when it comes to two bros. That's the only one you actually hear negativity about. Mate, you can't say that. What if they hear it? We won't oh, give you a pro card. Oh, I'm going to win a pro card now. <laughs> So right, I'll delete it. I'll delete, the, yeah, I'll delete this whole delete, podcast. Delete, mate. Remember to delete that, like with the other five bits we've already said. So timestamp it. If that's right. I, know, I will do. do it every week. Bzzz. Right, carrying on. That was the, the cut. Um, yeah, your one, mate. Your question, if you like. This is from Aisha, your client. This is, is still last week, one? by the way. Mm. Who's the most interesting person you've ever met? Hmm. Interesting person I've ever met. I like Train with Intent. I like Ryan. He's I like knew him. that you'd say that because I was, <laughs> I was thinking <laughs> the only reason that we're thinking that, like, obviously he's great. We really like him. Um, but it's because when we first met Ryan that owns Train with Intent, um, we both said like directly after we were like, he's really cool. Like yeah. very rarely do we meet someone who we feel like actually sort of is not necessarily just on like the same wavelength, not like that, but almost like quite intriguing and yeah. like almost like catches your attention and like everything like you listen to him like everything he was saying it was like yeah like everything this guy is saying like is what i resonate with like, yeah. yeah he was uh way of, he was, yeah, his way of wording his, his, yeah his way of wording and his communication was like it was very slow but it was it was it was like controlled it wasn't like he was putting up a front to try and like impress you how some people do unfortunately or how people act like he was it just seemed genuine he was like it was cool like i feel like we could have sat there chatting to him about training yeah, for or ages like, just about ages. life yeah. Usually, yeah the vast majority of people like admittedly me and you would just be like we were the ones who probably take the conversation because they'll be asking us questions and then we'll just be like yeah sound anyone want to have input or is it just us talking where with that it was like oh, we were actually intrigued and it was quite like we both were but i remember we got in the car and i was like i think i said i was like He's a cool guy, and you were like, "Mate, hey, honestly, I thought the same." He was like, That's what was, "We both said like." Is he the most inter interesting person we've ever met, though? No, I wouldn't say interesting. He's just a cool guy. Like, I feel like I, I get on more. Yeah, with he him. was interesting, but I'm trying to think. Like, I don't think I've met that many interesting people. <laughs> yeah, I think off the top of my head, if I've like spoke to. Somebody, to be fair, David Laditi is an interesting guy. Yeah, like yeah, he's just a sound yeah. guy. Like, I quite like how he's so passionate about his faith and stuff. Um. But yeah, like I haven't, I've not met Gandhi. Yeah. Have you? No, not no, unfortunately no. not. So yeah, uh, sorry, Aisha, we've not got anyone that's like stand out. Like, oh, this guy's so interesting. I met Rich Piano before he died. He just hit a most muscular one. He gave me a fist bump and told me, and after me waiting for an hour and a half, that was it. Have you got a photo? Yeah, I was fifteen. <laughs> funny, funny. Yeah, Rich Piano. Use it as the thumbnail for the podcast. <laughs> I'm in a, a buyer. I bought a five percent cap, so I'm like this, and he's just like he's Why just doesn't wear it to the gym with those <laughs> those two in Evo. Oh fucking yeah, yeah, depot, depot. That's what I should do. 
but uh, he loved that. Yeah, no, I, I don't really know anybody else. Like, like Rich Piano's an actual honest, yeah, Rich Piano. <laughs> that was interesting. It was so interesting. No, I, I wouldn't know off the top of my head, like, some people to sound. Like, for example, like, Josh Crogan. I like him. He's a nice lad. I feel like I could chat to Josh for a long time. But he's, I wouldn't be like, oh, my God, Josh is so interesting. I just think he's an he's easy company. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a, a, he's a good guy. Cool. Yeah, good guy, Josh. Jo- good guy, Josh Crogan. That's what I wouldn't with. say he's the most interesting person I've ever met, but he's, he's interesting. He's interesting enough to have a good conversation with um right i'm gonna have to do this now because i said at the start if i got australian accent i'd do it and i've just seen will razzo asked me to do an australian accent <laughs> right um what can i say do i have to say welcome to the podcast no i do like something about yeah but i can't go good eye mate another shrimp on the barbie because everybody can say that in australian no that's not a bad idea eh? no, go and say hey guys welcome to the podcast welcome to punch when you're in but i did see that'll be hard yeah, that uh, is. Going to be I'm sorry to any Australians if that was racist. <laughs> you don't all put shrimps on Barbies, I'm sure. Um, hi guys, welcome to the podcast. This is once you're in, you're in, mate. That's mint. Hey, that's actually really good. <laughs> I'm, actually, I'm actually impressed with that. Honestly, that was better, sick. Right? I'm horrendous at accents as well. I'm proper. That proud was actually of that. really good. That was that good. Was really oh, yeah, you have to clip good. that up. Yeah. Someone yeah, clip that, that up it. and send me it. That was amazing. <laughs> Mate, that's the highlight. That's the highlight right there. And we'll, oh, we'll also ask them. Mackenzie. We'll also, that's, yeah. That goes out to Mackenzie. <laughs> Mate, <laughs> we'll also Mackenzie's ask. Mackenzie's voice. And I was like, right. Is that what you were? Uh, yeah, I bet. Hey, I, I can do quite good. I'm not going to do it, and I'm not. But, you like, you know, to. Canadian and American accents. That's the only oh, thing no. I can do. Well, no, I'm not doing it. I'm, I'm, anybody I'm can do American. Back. Yeah, Canadian, American. Hey, yeah, Reese. Well. Thanks for this week's check in. Nah, you fucked it. That's American. Yeah. You've fallen off. Will said, mate, thoughts on Brightman placing. Like, mate, we're going to... Specific- yeah, we've got to do the next... Uh, we'll answer that one in a second. Just let me send you a new link. Cool, cool. Hey, I'm still buzzing about that, that little Australian accent that I did. Um, but yeah, what? So, thoughts on Brightman's placing. Yeah. Who asked it? Uh, Will. Will Razzo. Oh, did he? Um, so, first of all, I will say that I am not a judge. And therefore, this is just my opinion. Uh, I think it's very hard to judge when he's so much taller than the rest. Like, that is that is very, very difficult to properly compare versus guys that are a lot shorter than you. So that definitely didn't help him. But I also think that generally, like, the other guys posing was probably a little bit better. They hid their weaknesses a little bit better, like, in my opinion. Um, I think Brightman looks mint. Of course he looks mint. He looks fucking insane. Otherwise, he wouldn't be an IFBB pro. He wouldn't be competing at the level that he is. But that's the level of those guys. They're all really, really good. Um, so, yeah, like, I, I'm, I didn't see it all. I saw a bit of the live stream, which obviously doesn't tell you everything that you need to know. But I don't think, I'm not thinking that, oh, he should have definitely won. Again, I haven't watched it enough. But I think looking from what I saw, it's a lot harder to properly compare when there's someone who's a lot taller and a lot shorter. I think if he was against guys his height, then it would be a lot easier to give a proper sort of a proper opinion on what I actually thought. Yeah. And also, it's his first run out in classic after going pro in physique, you know? I'm not saying like that instantly is like a, a red flag where you're going to be like, yeah, you're not going to do well. But it's one of those, like his posing, how the whole system is, everything. Like it's not going to be as efficient and he's only going to get more experience on an actual classic stage. And I can almost guarantee like just the little things. Like, I, again, I wouldn't actually know. So I can't guarantee it's harsh for me to say that. But when you're a men's physique guy and you came up and it's the first time where you have to think throughout a prep, stay on my legs, stay on my quads, stay on my glutes, stay on this, things like that potentially could have let him down like I think how he hit his poses so he said like he could have demonstrated his physique to a better standard but that he's got he's what is he he's yeah you can easily work on that that's not a case yeah. of oh you need so much more muscle like no no definitely not you know so it's one of them like he finished fourth out of four and he might have finished if there was 10 people he might have finished fourth still he might have yeah. finished the thing is I think it's yeah. quite a good like a good talking point is that like at the end of the day, like Brightman's mint, like I say, he looks really good. Of course he does. Like, but people don't understand how good the standard is. Yeah. Like people will see Joe and go, Oh, he should win. He's gonna win. Because it's Joe Brightman. They they know him from Instagram and he looks mint. But yeah. it's not that easy. Like, it's not just as simple as like, oh yeah, he should win because we follow him and he's from England. 
Like the standards a joke. Like I don't think people realize that they just think, Oh yeah, you look good. So you're going to win. But it's really not that simple. And that's the same at any standard as well, to be honest, like that obviously even more so at the high, high level, but yeah. at any standard, you know, it's like you could see, for example, AJ, like a lot of people think AJ is so, so good, but then you put AJ against another guy who is better than him in the WNBF or the PNBA, IMBA, you could FBA, whatever show he competes in. Like he didn't win the overall last year because there was a guy that was better than him and he'd happily admit that. Yeah. But AJ, that doesn't mean AJ is not really, really good. Like it's just that the standard is very, very high. Um, I mean, I think people don't realize that like because someone's got a huge following or because they've got a great physique doesn't always mean that they're going to go and win every show they do. I personally thought AJ was like, I got fucking robbed. What? Was he? I should have won. Should have won the whole thing. No, he definitely he didn't. wasn't. He definitely wasn't like that. But no, it's part of it. And he gets opinions at the end of the day. Like if Joe looks good, like he looks good. He looks, Joe looks better than what he did last time he competed because he's in classic and he's not in physique. So it's a different sort of look. So like, and I can guarantee he'll probably be a bit better this week. He's not, it's not going to be a night or day difference. But it will be a bit better. His posing will be better. His confidence will probably be better. And he's going to get valuable experience. To, to say that, like, he was going to do this and then be on the way to the Olympia, I think, is somewhat, like, I don't know if even he thought that. I don't, I don't follow him enough to know. And if he did, then fair enough. You probably have not set yourself up to fail, but it's going to be maybe a harsh reality. But if he did it, then fucking hell, fair enough. That's wicked, you know? <laughs> Yeah, so, I think it's the same with, with Josh. It's like, yeah. if that happens, that's fucking mint. Yeah, but amazing. I don't think, I, I don't know, but I don't know whether they were expecting that. But also, you've got to think that that's the goal. So yeah, of you, know, course. you, you should be chasing down. Yeah, you won't go into a prep and be like, oh, I'll, take, I'll happily take a top six. You know, like you'd want to go in and think, I'm going to fucking win. But then the likelihood of that occurring when it's your first year in the pro ranks or first year in a different federation, or I say federation, like class, et cetera. Yeah, it's, it's one of them. It's one of them. So yeah, best of luck to to Joe. Best of luck to Josh. I think they're both competing this weekend. Is so it this weekend? Fun. I think so. Yeah, I think Josh is and Joe competing this weekend, or Joe might be competing next weekend. Yeah, I think it's next weekend actually. Yeah. 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 Um, Will Razo again? It's not a question. He just put, "I'll out bleed Reese any day." And he put hashtag bleed it out. Hashtag blood pressure PR. Yeah. Um, I'll do another one. This is from Curtis J. Borum. How many goals is Big Gabby Jesus gonna getting for Arsenal all comps? Europa League stat pad. He's put a Premier League 14, all comps 22. I think you've gone very like boring answer there haven't you no, I don't think he's going to set the world alight I think he's a good no, player that's why you've gone boring you haven't yeah. gone like he's going to do shit or he's going to do mint you've gone no, just I think he'll just do good alright he's a good player I like Gabby Jesus he's yeah, really, I think good. really good so I'm, I'm going to go just because to go against what you said I'm going to say he's going to score 22 in the league it's quite a lot mate the, literally that's golden boot yeah bar two goals last year no chance he's getting 22 goals yeah but I'm not being boring and going 14 yeah, but um, so you, you say that you're a good podcast host, but now you're not being genuine. And, you wouldn't even say that if it wasn't 30, like 30 in total. Okay. Mate, you never know. I might be right. We'll see. We both we both said eight in non Premier League activities. Yeah. So he's just got a far better return in the Premier League. That's what it is. Oh, so yeah. he's going to be more clinical for you in the Premier League. Well, there's more games. Uh, it'll be all right. Go on then. You ask me some. Right. Fair enough. Um, what's your opinion on gym owners not allowing tripod slash recording and no bands on certain machines? No fucking banded hacks. Get the fuck out. No bands in here, boy. Get it out. I find it strange. Like, I, I completely understand if you're banding a machine to the point where you're going to, like, potentially damage the machine. And I also understand gym owners that don't want you using gym pins. Like, I get that. Yeah. They put, a lot of money into the equipment they don't want it just breaking and you'd be like oh sorry so i do get that um in terms of the whole tripod thing like i think it's a bit of an old school kind of mindset where they just don't like the fact that that's the way that the world is now you know people create content people create their businesses from that content so i think a lot of the time it's a bit of an old school mindset like i know if we owned a gym like we'd be more than happy for people to film but there's also a line like you don't take the piss and let's say bring in 
a videographer and take up five pieces of equipment yeah well put on you know imagine bringing a videographer in that's putting setting lights up like for your session and things like that like there's a line to it yeah you know you don't want to be you make sure you don't just film other people randomly you make sure you don't take up any other equipment because you're filming like we had the tripod between the atlantis hack the other day then a girl wanted to use it so we just moved the tripod like yeah yeah, no problem like we're the ones in the way yeah you know also you've got to understand that you are the one in the way if you're filming and someone walks past your camera, what the fuck does it matter? You've set yeah. the camera up. Like it's the gym, it's everybody's space. As long as someone doesn't go up to it and just stamp on it, then that's like, okay, you're being a bit of a dick. But I think people almost think that they have a certain right over someone else that I'm filming, you can't walk in front of it or whatever. It's like, fuck off. No, like, it makes it worse. <laughs> it, makes, it makes the Yeah, like <laughs> the amount of times that people walk in front of our camera and go, oh, sorry. And we're like, mate, honestly, don't worry. Or like when we're about to go into a set, they'll like walk and be like, oh, can I? I'm like, yeah, yeah, go go for it like imagine it's not there like it really doesn't matter but i think like other people are a bit like a bit different but yeah i I don't know i think like i say if we owned a gym or if i owned a gym i'd be more than happy with people filming but then also there is a lot if we if i what are you trying to do you're trying to separate me man yeah yeah don't want to do anything with you do i basically did my own podcast and then you try and take over yeah make my own gym you try and take over yeah, I revive it. I come in and actually bring some some consistency to it. So that mm-hmm. yeah. no, makes it. I, I'm the same. My my thoughts are the exact same. It is what it is. It is weird, but hey ho. Got me to add some more. Good answer, mate. Is what it is. Okay. Really Another one, mate. Another one for for you because you're 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 a natural. Do you think there's value in getting blood done regardless of natty status? Yes. <laughs> Simple yeah. answer. First of all, just down to health, like see where your, your health markers are at. Um, you may be deficient in vitamin D and you don't know it. You may be deficient in iron. You may have under or overactive thyroid hormones, like loads of things um, that, that could be slightly out of whack, regardless of being natural or not. I don't think you should just get your bloods done to see where your test is at. I think that's what a lot of natural guys do. And like, oh, I need to see where I'm at to see whether or not I'm making good progress or whether or not I have the ability to make good progress. It's like, you know, you'll get it back. It'll be in natural range. It might be slightly lower end. And then you'll probably go, Oh my God, that's why I'm not massive. No, yeah. that's not why you're not massive. It's because you're trained for a year. Yeah, yeah. Like be realistic and understand that the difference between being at 14 nanomol and 18, which would be low to mid is nothing like it's really yeah. not going to make a huge difference. So I wouldn't just get it done to see where your test levels are at. I'd get it done to see where everything's at. And I generally do it like every six months see where i'm at or, or the sort of different points of a phase like i'd say every six months because generally that's like since i finished prep i did it not long after and then when i was like approaching like peak off season weight and then again another six months later i guess, I guess like sort of working through a gaining phase but generally every like six months or so if you can afford to do it then then cool i'd say maybe a bit more frequently if you're enhanced and a bit less frequently if you can't afford to do it that often yeah good answer Thanks, Who's getting relegated this season? Bournemouth. Yeah, agreed. I don't want Nottingham Forest to go down because they've round us, aren't they? They're only twenty minutes down the road. They've signed well as well. They've not yeah. signed like they've not been off with their signings. I might go and see if I can get get down to see a couple of games. I'm a Notts Forest fan now. You see, I was yeah. a Notts County fan, but then Kyle signed for Stockport, so now I'm a Forest fan. Yeah. Um, I don't know who else is there. Southampton, yeah. Fulham, do you think Fulham will go straight back down? Probably, yeah. Mitrovic will probably just get his usual bang loads of goals come up. It wouldn't surprise me if it was. It wouldn't, I think, I I actually think if there's any of the three to stay up, it would be Nottingham Forest. Do you I think it wouldn't surprise me if Bourne. It wouldn't surprise me if Bournemouth stayed. I think Fulham will go down. It wouldn't. I, I'll say Bournemouth as well, and then I'll chuck in Southampton just as a bit of a wild card. So I feel like they've been deteriorating a bit recently. They were shit yeah. at the end of last season. Have Leeds signed anyone good? Because they've got rid of Rafinha. Who can't. Yeah, they might struggle. I think they've signed quite a few. Like they've spent not a lot. Sure of money. how expensive they've yeah, signed a few players, just, but no one they've like. Spent a lot, worth. But I don't. Yeah, so that Sinestro or whatever. He's injured. So I'd be thinking, I reckon Leeds might go down if I'm honest, but yeah. we'll, we'll see. Right, put yours, mate, if you want, because I think I've done like three or four. Uh, again, this is from Curtis. At what point into training, years slash physique, 
did you feel like a bodybuilder bodybuilder still don't really now if i'm honest yeah, that's what i was thinking yeah. I don't think it ever, unless you like your main desire is like, I'm a bodybuilder, I'm a BB. I've never felt Such like a BB. If I was to get in a conversation with somebody and someone like who doesn't train, or like say a, a guy I went to school with, he was like, Oh, so you're a bodybuilder. I'd almost feel cringy saying, Yeah, I'm a bodybuilder. I don't. I just say, I go to the gym. Yeah, so it is a weird one because like you are, like yeah. that is what we do, but it's also like, I don't know, it, it, it's one of those like, we've said it before like if you just played football on a sunday are you a footballer like no, no. but a guy likes football we, a like well especially like long term you probably will make a decent amount of money from just competing hopefully anyway so you could then be like well i am really but then again if you it depends if you're doing bodybuilding or not if you're doing physique you're a physica physica yeah i'm, I'm a, a, cl- 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 a classic yeah i'm a classic I'm doing the old classic. It depends, <laughs> like, but I think ultimately that depends on the individual. And also it doesn't really matter. Like if you, if there could be somebody who's trained for a year and thinks, oh, I'm a bodybuilder and they, and they like being a bodybuilder and terming themselves a bodybuilder. If they want to do that, that's fine. Nothing against them doing that. It's not, no, you're not. Like, if you want to term yourself as that, that's, that's cool. Like we do bodybuild. Therefore, we could be classed as bodybuilders. But I see myself as a coach. A gym I see myself yeah. as someone who goes to the yeah. gym. I see myself as just a general guy. I don't think of myself as a bodybuilder. Yeah. Maybe yeah, I will. I maybe I will myself. one day. Maybe I won't. I think I'll also it depends on the phase. Like when you're competing yeah. and when you're tanned and when you're posing yeah. like every few hours, like then you feel like more of a bodybuilder, don't you? Yeah, I do agree. Because if you also, when I was like walking through like Birmingham the following day after finals and I had like my tan like you know like you have a shower you still got the tan on yeah. and like I'm peeled I had a lot of looks and if someone was a bit like you're a bodybuilder I'd be like look at my skin I'd be like kind of yeah but if I was like now and someone said you're a bodybuilder I'd be like I'd just go to the gym mate I'd just train yeah also you don't have a bodybuilder you're a physique remember that yeah exactly and men's physique isn't even bodybuilding so nope. make bodybuilding great again <laughs> yeah Make it great. Oh, Sanaya said, mate, she said it again this morning. <laughs> Make bodybuilder feel, <laughs> feel good. Oh, for anybody who doesn't know, there's an Insta page that, again, we've said, we said last week. It's called Make, Make Bodybuilding Great. It's not even yeah. called Make Bodybuilding Great again, I don't think. Oh, well, and Sanaya said yesterday, in the, no, day before in the car. Like, Make bodybuilding feel good. Feel good. <laughs> like, wait, what? And she was so adamant. She was like, that's it, isn't it? It's like, feel so great, good. And I was like, what are you on about? Like, just, I want to make bodybuilding feel so good. I, I think she's it. behind it and she's playing us. She's like, what's it called? Yeah. She's yeah. actually behind the page. Wouldn't surprise me. She um, um, this is from Mackenzie. She's asked, uh, good day, what, you, <laughs> what do you find the most frustrating in the fitness industry? Um, I should have an answer for this, but I think there's multiple things that we find frustrating. There's maybe not one exact thing. Yeah. Like I would say, for example, like the fact that the barrier to entry is so low. So there's loads of PTs that aren't good. There's loads of online coaches that aren't good that don't really know what they're doing. I think that's one. I think people almost expecting that everything has to be one or the other. Like that's one thing that I have to speak about a lot. Yeah. Yeah, people think it's on, you're on or off. Oh, I've been really on it this week. Oh, I've been off it this week. It's like you don't have to be on it or off it. Like, just enjoy the process and imagine that you're on a spectrum. Like, yeah. there's, there's, it's not black or white. There's loads of gray in between. It's not on or off, or it's not sort of zero percent or a hundred percent. There's loads of room between that. And yeah. like, we'll have weeks where we're not right at the top. We'll have weeks where we're not right at the bottom. You know, like it's normal to. You don't have to just be one thing. I was speaking about that to a client today. Like, right, yeah. as if people think that if you if you train, if you want to do well in bodybuilding, they think that that's all you can do. I am mm-hmm. a bodybuilder. I have nothing else in life. It's like, well, it's a bit sad. Like, you'll probably get ten years down the line and go, well, "Fucking hell! All I've done for ten years is just solely focus on this." And I actually realised that I've not done anything else or enjoyed anything else. I've not been on holiday. I've not gone to a family meal or anything like. That. It's like there's there's a level to it where being dedicated and just being downright blunt and emotionless to the outside world yeah no i agree i think that and then like i think as well you could kind of go from like how you said it one side or the other same with like opinions like it's very much like 
nowadays we live in a society where it's like you have to do this you have to do that or you do this or i think this and it's like in reality it's because you can talk to people and communicate when in reality you do what you said and enjoy the actual process and do whatever the fuck you want to enjoy and just go from there you know you don't need to be this camp or that camp or yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm team this i'm team that just do what you want to and enjoy yeah. it like be present in the moment and actually enjoy what you do on a daily basis that's the Not thing like, that's no. one like i try and sort of get that across to my clients all the time and i think people almost see like we, well, we spoke about it before like people see training tracking your food going to bed on time those kind of things they see it as a burden they think that they yeah. oh i have to sacrifice it i have to sacrifice so much to do this like if you think like that then don't do it yeah. like because you're not you going to do it because time. it makes you feel good like yeah. i go to bed at the same time each night because i know that i feel better for doing that yeah if i hated doing that then i wouldn't do it but i feel good for doing it it makes me feel more productive it helps me generally stay like well recovered it helps me be more productive the following morning whatever it may be like keeps me in a better routine when i'm in a routine i feel good about myself when i'm out of routine i feel down i start to spiral like you start just spiraling down a hole because oh my god like i'm out of routine i've not got enough time for this for that for this for that like if you feel like it's a massive burden to do those basic things then first of all don't do them second of all actually understand that the reason that you're doing them isn't just to make yourself look a bit better. It's to actually have more control over your life, which yeah. more often than not is going to lead to more happiness. Yeah. No. That's how, mate. Right. Question. How to approach waiting three days for a check-in four weeks in a row. Hi, Who is it from? Big fan of the podcast. Uh, Reese told me about this before the podcast, so we're not going to name names, but basically it's someone who's got a... And also... It's second question. So hypothetical, of course, obviously this, this hasn't happened. And then alongside the check-in being a two paragraph response. So this is someone who listens to the podcast who has got a high level coach. That's all we'll say. Mm. That doesn't mean anything. Um, it's one of those things like we're not going to go and say, Oh, you should do this. I should do that. Like at the end of the day, if you don't feel like you're getting your money's worth out of your coach, then there's your answer. Yeah. like there's nothing else you can do like, enough. yeah like, yeah literally if you're thinking like that then i would argue you're probably not with the right coach and it's a difficult one because the high high level coaches generally they're high level coaches for a reason they're good at what they do they know what they're doing but also with that comes more often than not a lot of clients and if you don't manage that well then it comes a drop in service especially yeah. to those clients who maybe aren't priority and without any disrespect to this guy, he's probably not the coach's highest priority at this given time. But mm. that doesn't mean it's an excuse for the coach to not provide a good service. But that's one thing that you've got to weigh up and think, am I actually getting out of this service what I want from this guy, from the, or this coach, whoever it may be? Um, guy, wow, we've confirmed it's a male coach. Yeah, no, I fucked it. Fucked it. Um, but yeah, I think like, Obviously, like for me and you, like we hold ourselves to a standard where generally for every single client, we'll get back to them on, that, on their given check-in day. So you check in on the, on, on the day before or the, the early the morning of, and you get your check-in that day sorted. Yeah. And if there's any issue, which there never really would be, but like if we're traveling or whatever, we'll say, right, can you check in a bit early? And I'll get back to you early. Or yeah. I'll have to send you as a voice note on WhatsApp. I really do apologize, but I'll update the sheets when I can get on my laptop, whatever it may be. But yeah if it's like you're waiting four days and it's a two paragraph message, like what are you getting out of that? Other than the fact that you've got a high level coach that you can tag in your stories, like what else are you getting out of it realistically? No, exactly. And I'd question like in a long-term productive coaching relationship, if things like this start to slip from the coach that allows potentially the client to slip and think, Oh, well, maybe it's, it's respect. not the simple as yeah, that. Exactly. You lose that, you lose that sort of rapport that can be built. And then, in a, a long-term gaining phase, fuck, I've ruined it as well. The client who's, the guy that he's asked is also in a gaining phase. Like, yeah, this guy, <laughs> knows, details, like, this is the guy. So in a gaining phase, after, after like a period of time where you need to be kind of, you, your head needs to be switched on. If this is already happening and you're only, what, a few weeks, few months, we won't say the exact amount, a few days maybe, <laughs> it could be a challenge to, to actually not, 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 not buy into it yourself. Because I know this guy has 
God, fuck, I've ruined this guy as well. No, no, I need to stop talking. Has goals and aspirations. So, like, he'll be wanting, he'll be, he'll be on it regardless. But when you're having that sort of response, I'd be a bit like, right, mate, this yeah. ain't... I was saying know. this to a couple of clients of the day. Like, for me, one of the most important parts of coaching is the relationship that you build with your clients. And that doesn't mean you have to be best mates with them. It's a yeah. respectful relationship. Like, if yeah. a client doesn't check in, I'll message them and say, like, Hey, how how are you getting on? How come no checking this week? Just what? Just want to know you're all right. And if it's like, oh, I just couldn't be bothered, then it's like, well, that's not good enough. Like, yeah. if you want to change and improve, you need to check in. You need to communicate. You know, there's no point paying for a service and not actually putting any time or effort into it. I can't help you if you don't communicate. If it's let's say, oh yeah, this has happened at, at home and this has happened, or I'm really struggling yeah. with this. Like, okay, no, no problem. Like, there's no stress on, on on you at all to check in. Just keep me in the loop, and I'm here to help with anything you need. But like. For someone to let's say just not check in completely for weeks on end, like that's disrespectful on their side. Likewise, if I just didn't get back to them, that's very disrespectful when they're paying for a service. Like, so it works both ways. Like, it's a two way relationship, coach and client relationship. It's not just like give, give, give. The client gives loads to the coach, and the coach just gets back to them when they can, and vice yeah. versa. Like, I if a client doesn't put any effort in, I'm not going to put my effort into that client if they're not willing to put time and effort. In. So it's yeah, the same exactly. kind of thing. So maybe for this guy, nearly said his name then. Maybe for this guy, maybe you've not been checking in. <laughs> Have you been checking in? Have you yeah. checked in once in a month and then gone, where's my check-in? I know that's not the case. Yeah. So And also the guy who's asked the questions applied with me. So coaching slots available. Send another one through. <laughs> no, yeah, don't. Uh, yeah, he, he applied with me before. Oh, ages ago, yeah. Yeah, yeah like before he prepped. So yeah. Yeah, there you go. There's your decision, there you mate. Yeah, exactly. Send another one through. I'll, I'll await the, uh, the application come Monday. I'm flying. When this podcast comes out, I'll probably be in the air. So by the time I land, I want to check my Google applications. And it best be there. <laughs> and it best be there. And you best leave your top coach and come to me. That'd be good. But, uh, but no, and also, and also communicate, say to him, what the fuck's up, man? Like, am I doing something different? Do I need to, oh, like, and I know you probably will feel slightly in awe of him. And you should do it. You should have that level of respect. But if he's not demonstrating that level of respect, you've almost got to say, what's happening here? Like, what's the plan of action going to be? I've got big goals. This sort of thing potentially might deter me from actually wanting to put the work in. Or Oh, yeah. I you shouldn't be having any, any concerns. Yeah. Like, yeah, you should be. be wanting to check in and wanting to listen to your feedback and looking forward yeah. to it. Like, that's going to help you work towards your goals so much more than questioning whether or not he's going to get back to you or worrying whether you've done something wrong or thinking oh do i need to change anything like it's yeah it's, it's not ideal but anyway let's move on before we accidentally name drop yep cool um i've got like two more mate and then i'm i'm done so oh, i've got four so can i do yeah. two yeah this is from aisha again what talent do you wish you'd have aisha's also asked what's your most unhealthy habit does i should just go random question generator it's good yeah she's good with yeah. questions yeah, what's my most unuseful talent? No. Um, what talent oh. do you wish you'd have? Oh, fair enough. Hmm. Talent. Something make me money. Football. Like, wish I was. I, I wish I was killing Mbappe. Yeah, I've got that. So, don't know what it could be. Um, I wish I could like just pick up an instrument and and like learn it like that. That'd be cool. Mm. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I wish I was like musical. I, I, mean, I think I could be, but I guess it's one of those like a talent is learnt a lot of the time. It's very rare that you're just born with it. Like, yeah, yeah. to an extent, like, obviously there are outliers, but a lot of the time you learn a talent, don't you? Yeah, it's not just like, oh, I woke up and I'm randomly amazing at doing this. You know? mm. Yeah, it's usually just hours and hours and hours. So I guess if it was like I could just get something like that, that I didn't have to put loads and loads of time and effort into, but to be talented at it. I reckon, you know, like what would be really good, like, you know, like computer tech and stuff like that, because that's so much time. Imagine if you were just absolutely yeah. really into computers, like that'd be so good. You know, like designing and stuff. Like I know it's like, it would be useful in actual data. Yeah. Like, or like, even like, like something to do with cars. So like you could, any car issue that you had, you could fix it yourself and you didn't have to go to the garage. Like, if, cooking, you know what I mean? Like if you knew how to cook everything, like you just like, like, oh yeah, I can chef that up. Yeah. Cooking's pretty easy though. You just Google it. But mm -hmm. I guess you could say with anything. You could Google how to fix this about the car. You can't just Google how to all of a sudden learn to play guitar. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. Right, go on. What was the other one? 
Uh, what's your most unhealthy habit? Biting my nails. Healthy in the sense of like, oh, what, what you bite your nails? I hate that I do it as well. Mm. I don't like. I go through phases where like I'm like, oh, I've not bitten them for a while, and I'm like, I'm doing well, and then like all of a sudden, it's just such a habit that I don't even notice when I'm doing it. Yeah. I don't have a habit that I'm like, oh, I do this every day. Mate, just keep your your habit of being sticky. Oh yeah, okay. So I do my hair before I get leave my car, and then my the, the hair products I use is sticky, and I haven't got a tap available. So then when I open Reese's hands, are constantly sticky. I don't think I've ever yeah. touched Reese's hand and it's not got something on it that's dirty. Because I sticky. do my hair, and then dirty sticky hands, Reese. That's what he is. And a dirty sticky hand. <laughs> he hates it as well. <laughs> because it's so like it's not. It's if you don't like it, then stop hair. doing it. Mate, I I leave my hair products in my car. That's what it well, is. Well, don't. It's not that hard. Okay, I'm sorry. Stop picking, stop biting your nails. Stop I know, I'm going to try. I'll try for you. Yeah, right, thanks. Um, do you think, this is from Woody as well, do you think switching on too much for a set can use too much energy in the early reps? So, like, can you get too amped up? I think we both agree you can. You definitely yeah, can. 100%. I was saying it to it? Will Jones in his check-in this week. I was like, just try and be a bit more calm. Like, yeah. he was saying he was struggling to sort of get switched on. He was finding that it was taking a lot of sort of energy out of him. Uh, and he was like thinking, I need to have a certain specific goal, like long term, um, to to really help me switch on. I was like, you don't like. Ultimately, no. you don't need to go into every single set like with an insane level of arousal. Like it depends on the movement, it depends on the individual, it depends on that given lift, that given day. You know, if you're doing like a 15 repper, if you go into that like screaming, it's probably not going to go very well. If you're doing maybe a five repper on something, then you can maybe be a bit more aggressive with it to the extent that it's not going to be a, a long set and cardiovascularly, it's not going to be that challenging. But yeah, I don't think, I think people almost see like that on some big sets, like we might do that before a hack or a leg press or a stiff leg. But if you look at us before, like a pressing movement, like we'll get into a certain zone, but we don't yeah. get overly psyched up where the point where like, it's just unnecessary. Yeah. Good answer. That's me done, mate. Okay, so Joel Tawia, do you remember Joel? Yeah, you're, is yeah. he? He's actually in there. That's a shame. Ages ago, yeah. He's oh. sound though. I like Joel. Um, so he basically, I've already answered him, but I'm going to answer it on the podcast, but as well. Uh, but he messaged me. I thought I'll just answer him quickly, so he doesn't have to wait. Uh, but basically, he was just asking on a T-bar row, is there any benefit or any difference to using the pronated grip versus a semi-pronated grip? Just uh, wait when you say like because to for the audio listeners, we're not talking about the V bar because that's the worst grip in the entire world. No, a chest supported T bar row. Oh, chest supported. Oh, so I don't know if you said chest supported. I no, didn't. Well, I just I heard T bar row. Assume. So I thought a regular T bar row. Does he not know that's the most least efficient exercise ever? Yeah, it only is if you use neutral yeah. grip. Yeah, exactly. And it's only if it's a V bar. It's more so elbow position and in line with the actual T bar row itself. Like you could argue, obviously, a slightly wider grip, a higher grip. If the elbows are more flared, you can potentially be ticking off a little bit more upper back. Where if your elbows are a little bit lower, a bit more mid back, maybe a tiny bit more lat, etc. But at the end of the day, you, you almost have to look and think elbow position in line with you as an individual, where you can pretty much stack joints and get everything into a good plane that feels good. And uh, and usually, what I would say is just play around. If you have to utilize, we've had D handles on rows before we've had we had a pronated um like a chest supported barbell pronated row chest you know during the last lockdown we got on really well with that if you were to look at efficiency we probably weren't perfect because we probably we would both i'd say uh, prefer some level of like neutral grip in between like some semi pronation wouldn't we like we wouldn't just be directly pronated but again it's person dependent exercise dependent and like machine dependent really yeah, I basically just said to him similar. I said, like, depends how you're put together. Yeah, yeah. You know, your your height, you know, on a T bar row, it could be the small difference of where your sternum is on the pad, um, yeah. your sh shoulder setup, like your shoulder girdle, how it's set up and what feels most comfortable. For some people, they might get some sort of pain in the rotator cuffs or in the scapula. If they have a pronated grip or a semi pronated grip, it might feel better than one or the other. Um, so, yeah, there's no real difference in terms of like elbow path. Yeah, it's going to be slightly different, but it's still a very much upper back dominant movement even if your elbows are tucked a little bit more so set with any row that you are going to be manipulating the scapula through protraction and retraction like it's very much an upper back focused row um last two so max fowler again 
to be fair, we don't need to answer this, but how to reduce pissing now he's drinking six litres. Um, so stop lying. Stop, stop, stop lying to us, man. Mass. What is it? Is it five stop or six? Next week, seven litres. Yeah, I just can't stop pissing and now I'm drinking seven. Next week, I'm <laughs> eight. I can't stop, stop drinking. Uh, right, final one. This is your client, Rock That Lifts. Yeah. When's the next show? Where? That's all he's asked. So I don't know whether he means my show or whether he means the show, the actual next show in the world. Yeah. I'm going to assume he means, for, for me, it'll be next year. And where? I don't know yet. For Reese, it'll be next year. And where? I don't know yet. For our clients, it will be the UK DFBA Northern in Manchester in three and a half weeks or three weeks when this comes out. Yes. That we need to sort the Airbnb for. Yeah, we do. Yeah. So yeah, that'll be that. And then for him, most likely on stage next year, which will be good. As a novice or straight? Uh, no, he's compete. I'm, he's he's stepped on stage before. I'd have to see what he's done. He hasn't competed since 2016, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe 2018. He um he sent me some photos of when he and I like how I've seen his Instagram. But uh, very exciting to to get Rockus or Rockas Rockas Rockus. I have to say get rock ass a rock ass yeah yeah exactly he's, he's gonna be he's gonna be wicked very very good so yeah very good exciting now uh that pretty much is that we're not too sure next week if we're going to be doing one because i'm away so what I'm sure we, you're just either gonna you know, bottle it or not i think it'd be good if we did it on a weekend and it could be out for the monday and then it's midway through the holiday so if we should do one i don't know if i get time mate i'll happily do it it's more so just from i don't know what i'll be doing time wise and on my Thursday, I'll probably will just be cracking on with work because I like I haven't even finished today and it's three and I've been on the go since like early morning. So just part mate, of the hustle. Get part of stop the hustle. Playing that small violin. We're all working hard, mate. I've got work to do still. Oh yeah. So yeah, I know, but it is what it is, mate. I'm on holiday. And second one holiday, I'm clocking up. I'm not replying. Thank <laughs> you. Bless me. Like, People, people think I'm going to get back to their check-ins like that guy who's asked and I tried to see sign up with me. Bro, I ain't getting back to you till I get back. See, <laughs> see you in two weeks. Imagine. Shocking. No. So yeah, I'll go on holiday on Monday, which will be good. Um, but other than that, everything is all good. So yeah, thanks as always, guys. The story tags for the questions for the engagement. Join the FPL. That's what we'll go with. And yeah, sound. Catch you guys next week. See you later. Bye.